Everybody seems to be wondering one thing. Why is the U.S. and producers like Diamondback not drilling more oil right now? It's a good question, Brian, but let's kind of look at the macro first. The U.S. is growing production. We're 11 and a half million barrels a day on the way to probably 11.75. And the Permian specifically is uh, we're probably going to reach an all-time high in production this month or next at over 5 million barrels a day. But the fundamental question about why we're not growing is because we have pivoted as an industry, at least for the public guys, from a business model that is chasing growth at all costs to now we're chasing returns. So the real competition between public guys now is not who can grow the fastest, but it's who can generate the greatest returns and give it back to their shareholders. Because unfortunately, like everything in America these days, everything becomes politicized, as you know. And so there's a thought that, oh, the U.S. producers are just kind of thumbing their noses at at Washington and they won't produce more as some sort of punishment. That's not it at all, right? It's just that for 10 years, investors lost a lot of money and they are making very hardcore demands on you and your management team. Yeah, and I think it's a fair question to ask what what would it take for the public guys to start growing again? And I think you've really got a couple of macro fundamentals that need to be resolved. You've got a lot of surplus capacity on the global oil stage today. And then more importantly, you've got investor sentiment, as you just pointed out, they're saying we're enjoying the returns for the first time in 10 years, and they're not telling us to grow either. And I think we've still got to see how the, how the COVID uh, Omicron plays out as well too, because it's obviously going to have an impact on demand. So until those macros change, you know, you're not going to see the public guys really leaning into growth for the foreseeable future. But you said something really fascinating about uh, there actually is growth in, in the Permian Basin and even in eastern New Mexico, I assume. One thing I've learned covering this business, coming in knowing exactly zero, mm-hmm. uh, was there's good rock and there's not good rock. Like, you, the, you have good, from what I understand, you guys have what they tier one acreage. Tell us what separates sort of Diamondback from maybe some of the others. Well, there's really three things I want our investors and your listeners to know about Diamondback. The first is that, you know, we've emerged from this pandemic stronger than ever. We took advantage of 2020 and and really honed our business processes and continued to drive efficiencies into our business. The second thing is, is that, look, in a commodity-based business like we're in, where you don't control the price of the product you produce, the best operator with the lowest cost and the best execution wins. And that's been our stock and trade for 10 years. And the third thing, Brian, is that from an environmental, social, and governance perspective, our investors are looking at Diamondback to lead the pack. They certainly want us to lead in terms of performance and lead in terms of disclosure. And there's a real important point here I want your listeners to understand, particularly because it it pertains to the environmental pressure that all of us are under. There's no oil producing country in the world. There's no oil producing country in the world that is working as hard as the public U.S. oil and gas guys at reducing emissions, reducing our environmental footprint, and continuing to earn our environmental license to operate. I'm gonna put on my activist hat. If I had an activist hat, I would say this. That's just greenwashing. There's many people who believe that the fossil fuel industry is the problem. They can't be a part of the solution because whatever they're trying to solve, they've actually created. Look, for Diamondback specifically, we've come out with five-year goals about GHG emissions. We're going to cut that by 50% from the 2019 levels. We're going to- how, how do you do that? So for GHG emissions, it's primarily around flaring. And flaring has to do with the way you control your business. Now, we've actually, there's two things when you look at flaring. One is what the you know, companies like Diamondback are in control of. The second one is what the midstream guys are. You know, the midstream guys are in control of. of the flaring that Diamondback has had over the last couple of years has been because our midstream partners haven't kept pace with our development. Now, we have a responsibility to make sure we're communicating so they follow, but the first thing for GH&G emissions is elimination of flaring. And we've come out and publicly said, look, routine flaring as defined, uh, you know, as as we see the definitions of, we're going to eliminate that, and we're we're well on the way of doing that. The second thing, though, Brian, is that emissions of methane are the most you know, that's the most punitive thing to the atmosphere. Heat retention, we all know what the statistics are. But for, for Diamondback, we're going to cut that by 70%. We're well on our way of doing that. And we're doing it very tactically and very thoughtful. We have 800 tank batteries that we're systematically going through and changing out pneumatically controlled devices that are operated by natural gas. And we're changing that to air. And that's going to make a dramatic reduce in our Can you do that method. without dramatically spiking the price of oil and gasoline? Absolutely. We've committed 20 to $30 million a year, you know, for the next several years in doing these type of things to drive methane, uh, methane emissions reductions. And look, we're not, 
chasing to an end point. This is a continuous process. We're holding ourselves accountable mm -hmm. to a five-year goal. At the end of that five-year goal, or before then, because I think we're going to meet it well in advance of that, we'll put more goals in place. Reduce GHG uh, emissions and reduce methane emissions.